This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the creditrepairshop.com. I have an excellent video for you today. We're going to talk about getting to an 800 plus credit score. I've achieved the 834 across the board, and I believe that I've figured out the algorithm to be able to get you there. And it's something that I really never had talked about a lot. Yeah, I talked about, uh, you know, repairing the credit, increasing your scores. But I, from what I'm seeing right now, with potential recession, with potential uh, changing in, of the way that we're uh, that people are earning money, you know, jobs are different. Um, people are more doing freelance type things. More and it's more and more important for you to have a a, a huge uh, 800 or 750, 800 plus credit score because you're unstoppable when you get that. I mean, when I talk, I'm going to uh, talk about some of the things that have came my way, opportunities from banks, opportunities from investments, that if you have this score, uh, you're going to be able to move forward and, and you know, you're going to have a different financial future than than other people who don't take this stuff serious. So, so please like this video immediately. The reason why is just the way that the algorithm is written for uh, YouTube. Uh, normally, I would say like it after the video, but just so we can help more people, so you can help me, so we can keep this thing going, and uh, you know, for me to be able to share this information with with you and others, uh, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, I think that it'll be w well worth your while for the videos that I've produced. All right, so j just a quick overview of how the credit scores uh, algorithm works. It's basically the same with all of the bureaus, but I chose this one here with, with Experian. This was right off their website. Uh, so I'm giving them credit for it so they won't think I stole it or anything. But uh, the FICO scores are the ones that are used to approve you for credit. Now there's different levels of a FICO. Uh, some of them are used for mortgages, some of them are used for credit cards, some of them are used for, for uh, automobiles. But this is the mix. This is basically the mix that of when, when everyone has looked at the algorithm, independent organizations, myself, uh, this is basically the mix that they're going to use to figure out your credit score. So the first one here is just the mix of the different types of credit that you have. You know, is it automobile, if it's mortgage, if it's uh, de department store cards, if it's regular credit cards, uh, you know, that's going to be have a big influence. 10% of your credit score is going to be figured by the mix of credit. If it's, uh, you know, personal loans, you know, the types of it, because they're going to look at it. If it's like, say, you know, the majority of your stuff was payday loans. Well, how do you think that that's going to be figured in that 10%? Is it going to be looked at to max the 10% or is it going to be looked at in a way to hurt you on that 10%? The next one here, let's go. Uh, it says the amount that you owe. 30% of your score is figured on the amounts that you owe. So let's just say if you have a mortgage and you just got your house, is that going to really hurt you? No, because that's going to be put into this credit mix of, hey, this person is going, they, they have home ownership. So this this is good for the credit mix. We're going, to, we want this person to be figured good here. But if you've got credit cards and, uh, you know, payday loans and you got department store cards and stuff like that and you have that maxed out at you know a hundred percent or ninety percent or eighty percent then that's going to hurt you in this thirty percent it's not going to help you in that thirty percent but if you have a mortgage you know that's not going to hurt you in this one right here but if you have unsecured types of debt or even if it's, uh, if it's a secured credit card and you're sitting there maxing it out every month and it's being reported as maxed out, that's going to hurt you with your score and it's going to hurt you in this category. The next one is your payment history. Payment history is very important because they're going to say over the longevity of giving this individual credit, what is what does that look like? Do they have 24 months of history? Do they have just one year of history? And have they messed up on that history? So it's very important. 35% of it is figured. Now I'm going to show you how this 35% works with how your new credit, uh, 
your the new credit that you have added can actually hurt you in this payment history. So now, if they're figuring that new credit it has a 10% influence, but if you add a new credit on your profile, it's going to take down your payment history. So let's just say day one, you uh, not day one, but you've been working on your credit. You got it to a certain level. Let's say that you're at a 750 credit score and then you go to the department store and they say, hey, you can get this discount. But this just happened to my wife uh, yesterday. You can get this discount. 35% uh, off of your purchase right now. And you're like, man, that would be good. Uh, I'm about to spend $100 and they're going to give me 30, 30, 35% off right now if I just apply for this card. It's like, whoa, uh, that'll look good. But let me tell you where the trick is, where it's going to hurt you with the algorithm. Let's just say that you've worked hard. You got your scores up. Your payment history is on point. You've been, you know, some of your stuff is... 20, uh, 24 months or more, and then you go and you apply for this card, and it gets thrown onto your credit reports, and it's like starting from day one. When the when the uh, algorithm refigures your your credit payment history, it's going to actually bring the average down. Now, some of the time you can't avoid it. Like if you go and buy a new car, you you get a house or something like that. It's you can't avoid it. But you can avoid it with going out there, getting new credit on things that you sh probably shouldn't be getting new credit on, like these department store offers and all of that stuff. So be very careful about that. Now, credit history is, uh, it says here, moderately influential, but you, we all know that your credit history is going to be very influ influential when it goes to uh, what you're doing because you, you can see where one of the things that they're looking at is what is your credit history they don't just look at your score that you don't be fooled by just the score the first thing that that's going to uh, attract a credit uh, a person who's going to a company is going to lend credit to you is the score because the score is going to basically uh, show them hey we have someone here that we want to lend to, but then they're going to dig deeper into breaking down all of these different aspects of your credit. And you will see that if you ever uh, get get turned down, they'll send you a little statement and it'll say, well, you know, payment history, credit history, amount owed. So they're going to actually break these down. The score is just the is just like letting you in the door. It's like knock, knock. Uh, my score is 800 plus or 750 plus. Uh, okay, you get to come in the door. And then when you get to come in the door, then they start looking at all of these here. So now let's get into it because this is this is what I want to start having everyone here starting to focus on. Now, what here is a way that you can actually, um, you know, kind of uh, manipulate the system is with AU trade lines. I talked about it uh, with with my uh, on my videos, I've talked about it with clients, but I'm just telling you, AU Trade Lines. Uh, I have clients who have taken advantage of this, and they have really been able to change their life. Uh, I, I spoke about one of my clients. Uh, he owns several restaurants. He went through a hard time. It took us four years to dig him out of that uh, uh of, of of what he had you know kind of fell into he had gotten divorced a lot of you know just a lot of things that would happen to, to all of us different things but one of the things that we did right away once we had got his credit cleared is that he had went to his parents and his mom you know she has excellent credit and she had put him on three of his cards and when we had did the rescore on, on his uh, uh, credit, he was over 800 with all of his accounts, over 800. And I was like, man, and then he, he was able to just move forward a lot easier than I see a lot of people who, you know, they get their credit uh, taken care of, but then they're just struggling. It's like, I can't, I'm applying for things I'm, and I'm not getting approved. And it's like, man, you you're uh, uh, you you aren't doing things in a way that the lenders are going to look at and say, hey, 
we want to go ahead and, and approve this person. And a lot of this stuff is done by algorithms. Like they're sending uh, applications are not looked at by an individual, it's looked at by a computer. And if you have all of these things right here covered, you know, you can kind of look at your credit reports. Now, I'm not talking about something where an underwriter, like a, a mortgage or something like that, trying to get approved for a, a business personal loan or trying to get approved for a personal loan, trying to get approved for a credit card. Uh, this stuff is looked at by a computer. And if you have these things covered, uh, you you be able to get approved uh, very quick and easy by doing some of these things that I'm about to talk to you about. So let's talk about the AU authorized user trade lines. You can actually, you know, get yourself approved if you have, uh, you know, you either have a family member that you trust that's not screwed up with their uh, with their uh, credit cards. You, they can throw you on. Uh, something that you need to do that has changed that I've uh, that that some of the cards are changing is that you got to do a two-step activation of that AU trade line where you have to actually call in. So your parent or the company or whoever you're using utilizing the AU trade line for, they're going to put you on and you know get get you the trade line, but also you have to call in and do the social security number and the date of birth as a different activation. So uh, you, you might need to watch out for that because if you've got the trade line and then, you know, and, and uh, I mean, you've got, you know that it was activated, but just like, why isn't it showing on my credit reports? That's the reason why. The other thing that you can look at is these credit boosters. Experian Boost, remember they were running the commercials. I think it had uh, the wrestler on there. I can't he was on there and he's doing all those Experian Boost commercials where you can get your rent reported, you can get your cell phone bill, cable, satellite. You might have to do this on all three or figure out a way to do it on all three. Not sure if when you do the uh, Boost Experian, if it's only for theirs or if they're uh, doing this across the board. But even if it's not, it can boost your Experian and then you can go and you can do this on the other ones. Like what I'm telling you to do is to dig into getting yourself like you might be thinking okay i gotta do it with one i gotta do it with the other one and the other one it's worth it when you look at what you'll be able to do and how you'll be able to move forward it is absolutely worth it even spending the money on it it is absolutely worth it so you can get your rent reported you can get your cell phone cable satellite tv anything that you're paying payments on that you probably they ran your scores on or you ran your credit on it, but they didn't report to your credit. There's a lot of these companies that are doing that. Uh, some other ones here, because I deal with some uh, uh, clients uh, that are Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, uh, you know, they're doing all of these different types of uh, uh, delivery type services where they're making money. You can use your auto, if you do any auto repair service, if you have any type of, uh, where you're paying that, that one company that would uh, fix your car if something went wrong. Um, I forget the name of it, man. It's just drawn a blank to my mind. But where there, you know, it's where this uh, uh, re repair, it's like you're doing an extended warranty service. You want to have them report to your credit. Or you can have the bureaus do or what's called a reach out to get those companies to report on your, on your credit. Any reoccurring, and that next one here, any reoccurring services that you're paying for, See if there's any options to get those reported. And basically, like the rent reporting services, what they did is they just sent out a letter, reached out, and said, "Okay, is, was this individual from you? What is the, uh, you know, did they have a good rental history?" And then they report up to two years of uh, backdated history on your credit report. So this stuff is very well worth it. You gotta get ready to move forward. Uh, into the future because the way that things are changing, I think that moving forward, the uh, credit scores are going to be like the number one way to get your foot into the door. It's already been that way, but I think it's even going to be more pertinent now that you take advantage of the opportunities to get yourself into those positions, uh, the different products and services that you can use to get your scores moved up. And then you just pay close attention to the way that your payment history is being reported and make sure that you don't do 
things to actually uh, make your payment history go down because it is big. This here, 35 percent, and then you got 30 percent on the amount owed. Uh, you're already paying on all of this stuff. So just think if you've been paying your cell phone bill for five years, 10 years to the same company, they put they, they have to put a minimum of 24 months on there. So when they put that 24 months, you got that new account. Yeah, it may not be pretty on the type of credit mix, but 35% payment history, your scores could, you know, just jump huge uh, by having that on there. Uh, you know, the, I'm just really going to be talking a lot about this because I'm seeing from what we've done with our other clients that this stuff is huge. It will get you into the 750s and ultimately in the hundreds if you take advantage of other opportunities that are available. Uh, all right, so in the video here, if you need help with your credit, please visit us at the credit repair shop. Watch the video, what makes us different? So you can see my eight point validation process, my two phase settlement process, because everything's going to start there. You got to work on that credit first and then look at these different opportunities to boost your scores. Uh, if you need to know where your credit scores are, you can uh, uh, grab uh, my free, uh, not my free, but go to the website your number three scores.com. And there's also a link below if you want to see your FICO scores. We just uh, got a service where you can see your FICO scores, what the car dealers will see, what the uh, mortgage companies will see, what the credit card companies will see, so you can know if you're going to be approved. That link, that special link is below this video here. You can check that out. And um, if you have debt collectors coming after you, grab my three-pack of letters. Statue of Limitations letter, debt validation letter, and cease and desist collection activities letter. Grab those so you can uh, just take full power of your uh, credit so you can be able to move forward. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the channel. Please post your questions and comments. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com.